Hey everyone, I'm Julian from Digital Trends and we're here with AJ Forsythe, the iCrack CEO, and we're gonna do a teardown of the Galaxy S8, which came out last week. It cost $750. Sometimes you're gonna drop it and break it. Hopefully your always you're gonna drop it. Well, yeah, for them, they probably want you to break it because they will come to your home and fix it or office wherever you are. And you got, you, I don't know if you want to do a quick rundown of yeah, how absolutely. someone can repair their Galaxy for, S8 if they break it. For sure. So iCracked is a nationwide smartphone repair company where um, in about 600 cities in the U.S., you go on our website and we'll actually send a technician to your home, office, coffee shop, and most repairs take less than an hour and cost around $100. So um, we're excited to get into the S8, which came out last week and explain some of the components and how uh, Samsung put it together because this is one of our um, favorite phones to, uh, that's ever come out. Yeah, and while you're doing that, we'll ask questions and uh, you know stay up to date. But one quick question, how much is that gonna cost for the average consumer if they break their specific Galaxy S8 yeah, or S8 Plus? Ab absolutely, so the S8 is probably gonna be around $200 to repair. We expect cost to come down um, as the supply of screens in the market increases. Um, but hopefully, given that it's a week old, not uh, not too many people need repair services for it yet. Um, this is the Infinity Edge display is one of the most like gorgeous displays that we've come across, um, and the camera quality on it is just amazing. So it's, it's, I'm, I'm impressed with what Samsung uh, came up with on this one. And again, you can basically, you guys have a website, just go on yep. and you guys will come down wherever you are and, and you said you have 600 cities? So, so we have, uh, we're in 600 cities, have a couple thousand technicians. Um, what's interesting is over 100,000 people have applied to be a technician with us and we only accept one to 2% of um, those that apply. Wow. We train them, background check them, uh, outfit them with the tools and parts they need to do repairs. And then you go on our website and you can actually like schedule the date, time, and location that you want us to be there. Okay. And uh, and we'll be sure to, to like surprise and delight you with a great repair. Wow, all right, well let's get down to it. See how easy it is to break this down. Absolutely, so uh, I'm gonna be powering it off and then um, we're gonna be going in, um, oh, hold on. Uh, we're gonna be going in through the back. So this is a full sheet of glass right here. So it's a front back or front glass and rear glass. There's adhesive that we're gonna be needing to break to open the device up. We have the fingerprint and heart rate sensor right here, 12 megapixel camera and the flash and uh, light sensor right there. So we're gonna be using um, guitar picks. We never thought we'd be in the business of manufacturing <laughs> custom iCrack guitar picks. But, uh, but you guys put your logo on there too, right? <laughs> so, um, so what I'm actually doing is rolling uh, the guitar pick. You can see the, um, the glass and the uh, bevel meet, and I'm actually breaking the adhesive um, through the back of the phone. This is going to allow us to remove the rear glass uh, much easier. And as you mentioned, you can't do this without heating up the phone first, right? Yes. Yeah, so we, we recommend to uh, heat it to 80 degrees Celsius. Not in a microwave. Not in a microwave. Ovens are perfectly fine. I'm just kidding. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so we're right now I'm breaking the adhesive around um, the edge. And so we're going to pull this out. And then we use um, what's called a is clack tool um, we're friends with the guy that designed this actually and um, we will what it is is it's dual suction cup so there's a suction cup on the front and the back and then we're gonna use a little bit of force and you can see it popping up and hearing that adhesive um, separate and so now that we have um, that open we're gonna remove the um, suction cup but you mentioned that it's very easy to break that display when you're doing that, right? Oh, it's very easy to b break this rear glass. And right. um, so our, our technicians will actually carry rear glass with them because okay. they generally have to replace uh, both the front and the back. Um, so we're gonna open it like a clamshell and then we can see the um, this wire right here is connected to the fingerprint sensor and it is connects to the logic board right there. When I was lifting it up, it automatically disconnects. And then so we're gonna pull this out and we can see that the um, adhesive that Samsung uses for what they call their IP68 rating um, is quite a bit of adhesive on the um, perimeter of the device right here. Here's the port for the um, rear camera. And then on um, the device itself, we're gonna be removing a lot of this and getting down to the logic board, but we see we have the wireless charging coil right here. So that's what the circular coil is. 
and then you can follow this coil and this is actually the NFC for Samsung Pay. So um, we can see the NFC wire right there. So most people don't think about it, but your internal wireless charging actually needs, uh, for inductive charging to work, needs coils, um, which is what we see right there. And then we're gonna be removing the 16 screws that are holding the uh, coils to the logic board as well as the bottom speakers and we'll run through where the battery is and how it connects. And also that wireless charging coil is connected to the battery through a connection, right? So it's yes. transferring the power through that connection. Yes, absolutely. And we'll, I'll actually be able to show you probably in two or three minutes um, where that connection specifically is. So there's 16 screws. Um, Samsung did a, did a solid in, in that they made all the screws standardized size. Um, we'll create what are called part charts, which um, this is a magnetic mat we designed. So we, we build charts that have specific locations of all the screws so that you can hold screws exactly um, on the chart where they uh, belong. But we haven't, given that it's a week old, we haven't uh, developed the, the part chart for this yet. So we're, we're removing these screws. And what are your personal thoughts on the repairability on this? device like is it I know it, it, it seems easy because you're doing it but it also you said there's things that can break and uh, you know what are the chances that if you take it to an average technician who you know if you're, if you're driving yeah, the technician uh, down, the, down the road is it gonna break or so 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 that's a great question so um, you do when you do like third-party repair from like mall kiosks you run the risk of like you don't know what quality of parts they're using you don't know how that technician is trained right. um, one of the things that we set in the industry was the idea of a lifetime warranty so anytime we do of the um, hundreds of thousands of customers we're going to service this year anytime we do a repair we warranty it for the lifetime of it the device so if we fix your phone and uh, the display starts bugging out two years from now we'll we'll send a technician back on site to re replace it the good news is is like we hardly ever have to do that and these um, are uh, hardware related problems right yes okay. so generally uh, hardware related problems I mean, if, if the phone breaks that's not going to be <laughs> that that is that <laughs> is a samsung a, problem <laughs> that is a, that is a samsung problem so we're uh we're making our way along the edge right here to uh, be able to start taking off some components which i'm excited about and so it's like when you're comparing it to other phones that like do you mostly do flagship phones do you do phones like for example the oneplus 3t or you know i'm sure you did the pixel or the lg g6 but any other phones do you do budget phones or is it so, so we generally uh try to stick to flagship devices so um basically iphone and samsung um, we will do like pixel repairs um, starting soon. That's actually a great phone. So um, we have right here, we can see we've removed the um, wireless charging coil and NFC coil as well as some injection molded plastic. We're gonna flip it over and back to where you mentioned uh, like it, at some point it has to um, connect to the battery. So these touch contacts actually transmit the power uh, back to the logic board um, at this area right here. So. Okay. That, that is so. Uh, it technically, is never really still wireless, right? <laughs> <laughs> we should make. We should definitely meme that. Um, so right here, we have the battery connection. Uh, as soon as you get to it, it's always good to disconnect it, just so you're not playing with any electrified circuits. Um, we have the battery right here, and then um, we. Ha this is the logic board, so you can think of this as like the brains of the device. Let's remove this bottom part, and then I can keep explaining um, how this is assembled. So this is actually the bottom, um, the bottom speaker, and then you can see it leaves a cavity right here for our beloved headphone jack. So the headphone jack is a three and a half millimeter headphone jack, which many Apple customers are crying as they look at this because they don't have one anymore on the iPhone 7 series. And does that save a lot of space? You know, <laughs> if, if you were to remove that, would that, because that was Apple's reasoning, would that um, save space for, if for Samsung? Would that be able to use it for something else? No, I, I don't, I think that that was a, um, that was an interesting reason. So you can actually, <laughs> you can actually remove just the headphone jack and it's about the size of like half of a dime. Oh, I don't think okay. given the uh, volumes inside, it's a, it's a space issue. We have the USB-C connector right here and then we have the speaker port which um, the speaker slides in like that you can see the connection to the logic board is through these two touch points right here that connect right here on the logic board so we're gonna keep uh, keep doing the teardown and then we're actually gonna be removing the logic board so we have a couple connections 
that we need to pop off. This connection is the digitizer, which is basically a fancy word for the touchscreen as well as LCD. Um, you have two antennas. One is the Wi-Fi and one is the cellular connecting down here. The antenna is actually bridged on this bottom aluminum point as well as the sides. And then we have um, the top camera connection right here. So we're gonna pop that off as well as the buttons on the side connection right here. You pop that off and then we can pop off this bottom antenna. So um, now that we've removed the main connections on the logic board, um, and then we can remove uh, these two as well. Is there a particular place you can point to for the internal storage, by the way? Oh, that's an that's a excellent question. So um, this particular device comes standard with 64 gigabits of, uh, or gigabytes of memory. They're under this uh, shielding right now. It's called an EMF shield, which is for electromagnetic interference as well as like thermal right. um, protection. So you can pop off these shields and um, look at them, but you run the risk of like damaging any logic board components when you do that. Okay. Um, but so your, your Qualcomm Snapdragon chip, as well as your um, CPU memory uh, RAM there. are all under these two shields as well as on the underside of the logic board, okay. which we can get to right now. So this is, you have to be careful of the battery wire. So we're going to be gently pulling out this logic board and then we're going to be flipping it over. So we have the rear camera right here. This is the, where the display connection is. And we're going to flip it over and we can see how much space the rear camera takes up as well as right here is where the SIM card and micro SD card um, go. So they stack the SIM card and micro SD card. And you said the Qualcomm chip is right here? Uh, I, 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 it's underneath this, uh, this black part okay. right there. And so we're gonna turn this around and uh, we can see how much space the battery takes up. It sits snugly in the, it's, it, it's called the battery bay. Um, we see a lot of connection points so that you don't have to use physical pins. You just use contact points. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and then um, seven like contact points for the logic board, certain parts of it to actually sit down on these gold parts and um, receive and transmit signal. We have the uh, vibrator motor right here. It's a little circular um, dome. And then we have the USB-C point, and then this all is wired to the logic board. You can actually see this connection right here. It sits snugly on and pops in um, right there. And it's, it's, it's a pretty fancy way of um, designing it because you can basically make a logic board that is in a U shape, um, given that, the, that connection without having to manufacture an actual, um, the U shape logic board. And you mentioned the battery bay is new, right? That's not common to, in, in most phones in general? Yeah, so, so Apple actually doesn't use a specific injection molded battery bay. Um, the Samsung, I think they designed it so the battery doesn't run the risk of moving around or bumping into the um, sensitive electronics. And they use a, a ton of adhesive to hold that battery together. And that's um, all an extra precaution because of what happened with the... We don't talk stuff. about that moment. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just kidding. Um, so it is an extra um, precaution. We don't recommend you replace the battery yourself. Okay. Um, you can run the risk of puncturing it and uh, getting lithium lithium on you and and but that's, um, a, that's a problem with all batteries right here. yes 100 percent. so um so right here we can see that we have the frame and then the lcd um is actually connected to the frame so when we're doing these replacements um, we're actually replacing this whole frame uh when we do them so when really when we say we're doing a samsung s8 replacement we're coming out and replacing this as well as the rear glass, uh, if we end up, uh, if it ends up breaking when you're removing it. But the unique thing about this is, on most phones, you just replace the uh, the screen itself and LCD itself, and this we're replacing the frame and the wiring for the buttons um, as well. So it's a it's a pretty overall, it's a pretty interesting repair. Um, we Would should, you say it's like well constructed, like and it's fairly easy to move everything? Would you say it's... if if you know it? So when when people ask like, is it hard to um, replace my screen myself. I, I always say, listen, it's not it's not hard to replace it yourself, but it's really easy to mess it up if you don't know what you're doing. Okay. And so we, we will provide like very detailed repair documentation on, um, on how to do these repairs for our technicians. We train them and certify them and then- But um, you guys sell do, uh, do it yourself kits too, yes. right? So the do it yourself kits are for the, uh, probably like you and I for the three to 5% of the population that likes to 
um, like tear things down, replace things ourselves. Um, I, I wouldn't say it's necessarily for everyone, but for the tech savvy and handy individuals, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a good option. I feel like I would still mess something up, so I, I would leave it. That, that's why I'm here in the office showing you what to do. <laughs> cool, well, thanks so much for that teardown. Um, yeah, and, and that's the Galaxy S8. Um, you can find more information about that on iCrack's website, yep. and you guys will be doing live uh, repairs starting in two months, you said? Yeah, it, probably one to two months we should be uh, repairing this device. And that's just when everyone gets up to speed. On yep, cool. that's when we train everyone. Well, thanks for doing the teardown. Cool, thank you for having me, this is awesome. Thanks for watching.